Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. It's 3 a.m. I can't point, but it's 3 a.m. On our way to Grapevine, we hope you guys enjoy today's video. I tell you about, I mean, you might have saw it on my story, but uh, I've made my second by myself. I made my second top pop plate coin for PCGS, and my second one that I made is a one of one. Have you seen it in person yet? The only plate coin I've ever made was the, uh, the top pop. Alrighty, just got home from the Grapevine show. Wanted to show you guys everything that we got. Whole lot of commemoratives, a few other cool things as well. Let's start off at the bottom left here with 1936 Oregon commemorative half dollar. This one's graded MS65 by PCGS. Reason why I got this one, and I got a lot of coins actually from reliable coins. If you guys don't know who Shane is, I'll leave his information down below. Really strong blast white coin, and uh, you know, you gotta buy coins that people end up loving at the end of the day, and I think someone really liked these. Uh, you know, we've been picking up coins with toning on them, but we've also been looking for coins that are just blast white. Nice examples like this one. These actually came right out of his dad's commemorative uh, album. They actually sent it all into PCGS. They had them for a few years now, and so they ended up cutting me a pretty good deal on a lot of them. Here's a 1936 Bridgeport commemorative half. Another strong blast white example. A few kind of nicks on the face here, but still, I do like the coin very much. We've been like, you know, slowly getting these in and slowly been shipping them out, so very excited about this one. Up next, I wanted to show you guys this very cool 1878S Morgan Dollar Grade MS64 Plus Star by PCG, I'm sorry, by NGC. And the reason why I got this coin is just because it has some strong eye appeal on the obverse. And most of the time when they star a coin, they're going to be starring a coin either on the, for the reverse or for the obverse based on its eye appeal. But in this, in this case, let me just break it down for you simply. They thought this one was close to a 65 but didn't have enough to cut it. And they also thought that the, the obverse was very frosty, but the reverse wasn't as frosty. And so when you flip it over, this is kind of what you would see on a normal business strike. And that's why they only gave it the star. They did not give it the proof like designation for that reason. Still a pretty nice, stunning coin. It's good to buy coins like that because there's a lot of 78S's out there, but none like that, of course. Oh, a few like that, of course. Here's one of my favorite commemorative designs. This is a 1925S commemorative half dollar. It's a California. He's just prospecting for gold there. Another a nice blast white example. This just came out of my, uh, my friend. Uh, his name's Todd. He actually ran the Broken Arrow show. He just upgraded his, his California commemorative, so I put this one just in his case a few days ago, and I asked him about it and picked it up. I just don't see too many great examples out there right now, and especially on eBay and other places, and so I wanted to give this one a shot. If it didn't sell, I'd be super happy with it anyway. Get to pick it up once in a while, take a look at it, and uh, I don't know, I just fell in love with the example and the design way back uh, when I started collecting to begin with. Here's a 1923S. Monroe commemorative half dollar. Got some haziness in the fields, not 100% blast white, but I got a good, pretty good deal on it. Old series holder as well. Do kind of like the interesting, uh, you know, I'm not sure what it's depicting here. I think it might be depicting the United States. I have no idea though. I have to look into that one a little bit more. 
And we got a few uh, Buffalo Nickels at the show as well. Been starting to like kind of AU58 types of coins. I'm not really an MS61, MS62 uh, type of guy or MS60 guy. I like just, I don't know. It has a little kind of a story to it of its own. It was out, out circulating for a few days before someone picked it up and put it in their set. Or they kept it back for grading one day. And so bought a few of these just kind of as entry coins for someone that's wanting to start collecting buffaloes. That's what you always, you know. Always try to do when you're when you're a coin shop or an online coin shop, find coins people have been waiting out their whole lives to see, and if they're getting into the hobby, try to find them coins that they would like to, you know, like to uh, you know start out just understanding the hobby and not have to spend a whole bunch of money. This one's a tougher date for the Mercury Dime series, lowest mintage. This is 1916 Denver. Um, it uh, is pretty worn as you can see, but still a pretty expensive example. <laughs> I think fair twos right now are, are around uh, 600 bucks, and so had to pick one of these up. We just don't have any available in the shop, and uh, these actually have been pretty tough to find as recently. Maybe it's just an uh, uptick in people wanting to have them, but that's the way it goes. And so we found one that's super super low example. We just can't afford ones that are like VF and everything else. It'd be just way too much money to be tying up, but still a pretty nice one. Here's a 1936 Cleveland. Uh, Shane's dad picked out a lot of great examples here as you can tell all blast white and just stunning stunning coins most of the way you're ever gonna find on a Cleveland just because there's not a lot of high points on the reverse it's gonna be on the obverse and as you can see there's a lot of kind of hits right on the cheek and right on the chin um, just but still pretty nice that's kind of where I would get it 64 from I think it would grade it a 63 but that luster really just carries it over it's very powerful on the coin Nice, another buffalo right here. Had a type 1 at the show. Got a type 2 as well with it. it actually came out of an AU58 kind of collection that a guy assembled a while back. And he ended up selling it to, uh, his wife ended up selling it to a coin dealer there. And uh, he passed away, but that's the way it goes. Hoping to find a new home for those. Here's a Lynchburg commemorative half dollar and a nice OGH holder. Just has some strong luster. Looking at this coin for a few shows, not sure if I should pick it up, but... Commemoratives have been pretty tough to find lately, especially in old green holders, and so I thought it'd be cool to, to bring this one home, offer variety to the group that we're sharing today. Here's one of the best states in the Union that we picked up. This is a, a Texas commemorative half dollar. This one's graded MS64 by NGC. It has an old green holder, or they call it the old green fatty holder, just because uh, you know it, it's uh, not two pieces, it's just one big piece, as you can see. It's kind of kind of have some interesting uh, kind of yellow film to it, but still nice little design. One of my most favorite ones of the series as well. It doesn't beat the Cali in my opinion, but very busy reverse. I just do think there's a lot going on there, and I think that's just really cool. Really do love it. The Alamo is even in the background as you can see. Yeah, stunning piece. Got a little bit of a tougher Morgan here, 18940, great AU55. NGC, a little bit of cleany look to it, but that's kind of what happens. Uh, they neck graded it down because of that. And there's a decent amount of circulation that really wouldn't warrant for an AU58. And so, nice little piece. There's a lot of wholesalers that like to pick those up, so I try to get a few when I can. If they don't sell in the shop, then you can always find a wholesaler to pick up coins that, yeah, maybe are just not sought after by your uh, specific client base. So that's something you guys should look up and understand, and maybe we could talk about that in a future video. Here's a 1946D, uh, Booker T. Washington. Still has some nice luster on the coin. It is a gem state coin. And uh, I've been buying these lately just because I've had a lot of commemorative guys reach out and say, hey, we want to you know, start developing sets. Can I get on a list? And I've actually been asking people about commemoratives before I even put them on the website just because there's great people out there that just been looking for them. And I try to help people with their sets when I can. So if you guys have anything I need to look out for, make sure to comment that down below. Here's one of my most favorite pickups of uh, of the day. This is the 1889 Morgan Dollar Grade MS63 Star by NGC with the CAC sticker. I don't know the, the backstory on the pedigree, the Michael pedigree here, but I do know 1889s are very hard to find toned. And so that's probably a primary reason why they picked this up. The eye appeal is very strong on the on the obverse here with a nice rainbow up top, a little bit of blue hue hugging the, the top side of the rim here. Flip over the coin, still some nice kind of rainbow hugging America. 
and I just love the coin overall. If I could keep it, I would, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. We have a few other coins that we're setting aside for ourselves, and so it's still just a gorgeous coin. So we got a bunch of walkers here. We got two walkers right here, another two walkers right here, and another walker here. I'm going to show you a few of them real quick. Don't want to go through them all. You'll find a lot of these on our website, AkushaCollectibles.com, if you're interested in them. But we uh, we buy uh, walkers that are nice, blast white examples, They're just problem free. Just when you see them in hand, you'll really fall in love with them. And that's kind of what I try to strive for when looking for certain coins. If you don't fall in love with them, then they're probably not for you and they probably won't be for your client base. Buy an affordable proof like at the show. This one's a little bit hazier just because they didn't really clean the dyes too often um, at the New Orleans Mint. They treated them pretty bad. Still a pretty strong strike as you can see in the hair there. And uh, it does, like I said, have a little haze to it. But that's what you can expect on New Orleans Mints. Bought an 81S there, but I ended up selling it to a, a coin buddy of mine but just because he's a good friend. And I wanted to make sure he makes a few bucks there on, on a coin that I had. But I'm sure he did pretty good at the show as well. Here's 1892S. Uh, 1892 CC I'm sorry this one I've been looking at for a few shows also I thought it was just the most original example for the grade really do love the look of the coin paid more than I would normally want to pay for a coin but I mean just look at the originality look at the the beauty of the coin I can't go wrong with it it makes me excited to pick it up and uh, you know there's a lot of cleany looking uh, not very original coins out there that are circulated and so when I find one like this I kind of want to set it aside and uh, offer it to you guys. So I hope you guys appreciate that. I'm going to start off with a few more commemoratives here before we wrap up today's video. It's a 1936 Delaware commemorative half dollar. Uh, you know, I've got, got a beautiful little house here. I'm not sure what exactly is pictured. Every single state's different and needs its own study of history. But do love the ship on the reverse here. Another, another kind of, this one from Shane's dad also. Very blast white. Got a nice Arkansas here with another strong kind of blast white obverse. Um, does have kind of some some hits on the on the face here, but that's kind of what you can expect. And uh, another kind of eagle. Got the eagle here. Love that coin. Got another one down here. Kind of the same exact story. That one's a 38D. This one's a 38P. But like I said, sometimes you just gotta buy the ones that are have the most eye appeal. And I thought these ones really did well. Um, they ha there's certain collectors out there that pick very nice coins and then when you actually get to see them all in hand you go oh wow can't even purchase them and so that's kind of what happened with Shane here's a San Diego commemorative half dollar did have a lot of issues you know when I was getting out of the mint and got hit by a few coins um, but it is a mint state 62 a little bit less on the luster side um, you know there, there is some kind of uh, chatter but Interesting design, actually a super affordable commemorative, which is nice. Some of these commemoratives just get way too expensive, way too fast. And so San Diego's your be best bet sometimes. I think it was one of the most minted kind of uh, commemoratives. 1935 uh, over 34, Boone commemorative half. Back again with a nice blast white look to it. Do love this coin also. And we got a 35D Boone, yeah. So. Wrap everything up here. A lot of commemoratives this weekend. Uh, I've got a toner right here for you guys. And just very excited about everything that's happening. Can't wait for the next coin show to get it underway. And uh, yeah, uh, we'll cut it to the outro here. Alrighty guys, just sitting in the car. Wanted to make a synopsis of this weekend. Uh, not too many things were going on. Uh, there was just uh, not too many coins really. I mean, we were at the Broken Arrow show and a lot of the same dealers were there. It's just, uh, we didn't spend too much, is what I would say. And that sometimes is a good thing. So most of the shows that we go to, we spend every single dollar that we have. And it gets it working, it gets it flowing, right? But having the money also available when you don't spend at the show is good because it opens you up to more opportunities. There's more people that reach out to us every single week asking to uh, sell us coins. We have people that are local. Um, so if you ever run into something where you're like, man, I didn't get the inventory I needed at a show and you're a coin dealer, just understand that this is an opportunity for you to put yourself out there, you to spend more time uh, connecting with people online, uh, looking on eBay, certain things that really help develop your skills 
because sometimes you can't be solely reliant on a coin show for inventory. And if you are, it's going to end up hurting you in the long run because I feel like ever since the pandemic, there's been a lot of things that have been changing and you have to kind of start to move in five different directions. You gotta move on social media, you gotta move on uh, YouTube, you gotta move on, on shows, every single thing. There's so many things to, uh, to open yourself up to. And the more you do, the more you're gonna end up reaching people, getting them uh, to help you follow what you do as far as a passion as a coin dealer. But I hope this helps anybody that sometimes has a show that they you know, wish was great, but that wasn't that great. Um, but still, very happy for the experience of Grapevine. We hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys did, please leave a like, uh, comment your thoughts about the coins, comment your thoughts about everything that's going on, and uh, subscribe down below. We are uh, on our way to 2,300 subscribers. Very thankful for just everything that's uh, been happening with the channel and you guys. And so we will see you guys in the next video.